So something missing from my collection is an SX-64. I've always wanted an SX-64 and have not been able to find one. And if you have one, let me know. But uh, I thought today what I would do is I want to take my Combian Pi 400 and I am going to use a device from Vilross to see if I can create the spiritual successor to the SX-64. Now, it's not going to be the same form factor, but hold on. You'll see what I mean in this Retro Combs video. Quite a while back, I took one of these and turned it into one of these, the Combian Pi 400. And just as a reminder, remember the Combian Pi 400 uses Combian 64. We plug that in, we turn that on, and it boots right into C64 mode. And as part of the project, I made a nice little label right here. You can see that, the Combian Pi 400 label. I put on these great key covers that give us all the pet ski characters we need and i even created my own little serial number plate on the back and all that information is available in the companion blog post for that youtube video but i do want to do something with this guy and i don't really want to change much i just want to now turn this into something that is a little more portable something i can take with me something that arrived in this big box right here and what I'm going to do is open this thing up and show you what I found from Bill Ross. This is the PyDoc. 400 by Vilross. What is the PyDoc 400? Well, you may have seen it online, but in a nutshell, what it does is you take a Raspberry Pi 400, drop it into this cool little laptop shell, and it becomes a portable Raspberry Pi 400. All right, let's open this box up and see what we get. All right, first thing we get is a setting up your computer. Pull this out of here. This is a big old case. Looks like here, oh, this is nice. A laptop case. It even has a shoulder strap. This looks like an HDMI cable right here. This is a USB-C, probably power cable. And then we have our own power supply. Let me go ahead and talk a little bit about Vilross. I did reach out to them to see if they might sponsor the PyDoc 400 and this episode, but crickets. I sent a note to them, asked them a question about a month ago, heard nothing back. So what I don't know is if anybody is looking at the online communication page so if you need support that's the page you have to use you can choose you know whether you want support you want to contact somebody i can't vouch for them i'm just going to be just honest and open any message back would have been nice just to say either yes i would support them or no i won't so if we have problems with this thing and need tech support i don't know where we're headed uh, but hopefully this thing out of the box is going to work uh, I still felt like this was worthy for the project, but to be clear, Bill Ross has nothing to do with this video whatsoever. This is my own purchase. This is, we get what we get, and I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. So here we go, we're gonna dig in. So here is our power supply. It looks very similar to one I already have, uh, and one that I have been using, except for this plug right here is not USB-C, this is a regular DC barrel jack. This, is our USB-C to USB. We'll find out how we're gonna do that. And then this is the important HDMI. Is that mini or micro? I, I don't remember. I think that's micro, right? I always get them confused. And this is basically a laptop. That's what we're getting right here. And you can see it is all white. Whoa, it is very light. Uh, obviously the guts of the laptop are coming from the Raspberry Pi 400. You can see we have our barrel jack here. We do have a headphone port, which you don't find on a lot of newer computers. Uh, you can see the Vilross is on the back. We have some heat dissipation venting here. We open this up. It's a hard to open, I will say that. And you can see inside we have an LCD panel. We'll see how well that works. And then we have this cavity right here where the Raspberry Pi 400 will drop in. There is a touch pad right here. Uh, looks like there is a, some plastic on there. We'll get rid of that. And then there is plastic on the LCD here. Really what it's time to do is it's time to assemble this thing. And I don't know, I'm kind of dubious at this point and wondering if I really should have spent the money on this that I did. 
How much money? Um, it was about $250, folks. If the, if the screen looks good, I'll feel like we did okay, but whoa, it was kind of pricey for what I feel I have right now, but there's no battery. Uh, the first thing we do, connect the HDMI and USB-C power cable to video and power out ports. Okay, so that's here. And those ports are right under here. You can see those right there. So one of these gets plugged into here. And then the HDMI gets plugged into here. All right. Next step is to insert the Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard into the slot and put the screen down into the closed position. Important, make sure the SD card is installed in the Raspberry Pi before inserting the Pi 400. All right, we need to slide the cables through the slot in the back, ensuring the cables are flat. All right, so let's go ahead and get these in here. So the, the slot that they're talking about is right here. So let's get that. And it should be flat. Now there's a little piece right here that is giving, I mean, that's there's a lot of flex right there. So, huh. man, I, I'm not so sure. We'll, we'll find out. Now run through the back right here. And, put this back here and now what we do is we put the Raspberry Pi 400 in here now it does have these magnets so I assume it these magnets are going to connect to something uh, it is not setting stable there let me see what's going on here huh interesting look at that see how that's it's just going back and forth Fourth, it says after that, close the case and then connect the USB-C. So then I've got to connect everything here like this. Okay, we know the power is going to go here. It's going to be kind of hard to see, but you can see right there. This is going to plug in right here. The HDMI is going to plug into the second one here. And then this is going to plug into any USB. Really? That's, that's horrid. Let me see if they say what to do here. They don't say how to hide these cables, but that's, that's, that's just a mess. What in the world? But they're sticking out. See, this one is sticking out beyond the edge of this laptop case. So you can see I'm not going to be doing much hiding. Now I can push some of these down in here. Let's see. Looks like I could get to the SD card and swap that out if I need to. Um, I can still get the GPIO pins. I could run a network port if I needed to do that. So let's keep on, keep it on, and let's plug in the adapter. Let's get some power on this thing and see what happens. Right here, so we'll plug that in, there we go. Now what we do is we open up our case. All right, let's turn it on. Now, Combian 64 is on here. We should be able to turn it on and see the C64 screen start up on this screen right here. Now, I haven't pulled this off yet, but we'll do that later. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens, folks. Here we go. We have a light. And there we go, we have the Commodore 64 screen up on this PyDoc 400. Wow, and actually screen, it's not the best screen, but for heaven's sakes, that kind of works for this. Yeah, there we go. And we are going to change this to a C64C with NTSC. Uh, actually, let's change it to a C64SX since this is the natural successor to the C64SX. Right, it is, right? Kind of, sort of, maybe. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Commodore.
is keeping up with you In a world of high technology And ever-changing moves In a world that's All of my belief And changing Okay, so we have set up the Raspberry Pi 400 with Combian 64 on the Pi Doc 400 running the Commodore SX64 basic version 2.0 and we're okay, but we need a joystick and we need to try and run some software. Let's go ahead and change some things in Raspy config too. Gonna fire up our Wi-Fi audio through HDMI. That's good. Host name. Let's call this SX64 version two. I'm writing that down because now we'll be able to connect to this via the network and drop in some disk images so that we can play some games. We've resized the boot partition, which is good. Let's change our localization option and our locale. Let's go ahead and configure that. Let's configure our time zone, check our display resolution. Let's set that to 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. All right, let's go ahead and finish and let's do a reboot. All right, there we go. And it did take care of the black ribbon around here. So it looks like everything is working much better now with those configuration settings. Oh yeah, that is much better. That looks, let's go ahead and quit the emulator and see what we have. That's good. Still, this is pretty small, and I can change this setting here for the terminal, but it is actually expanding to the edges now. I might go ahead and change the size of the terminal text, which I do have a blog post on how to do that. Uh, so I'll need to review that myself because I don't remember. So let me go ahead and exit out of here for now. And there we go. What happens if I close my lid? Looks like the light is still on, see that? Um, I'm kind of torn. Do I want to continue on with this thing? Um, I mean, it is pretty. Guys, this is, this is pretty cheap. There are, honestly, there are probably better ways to do what I'm trying to do here. But you know what? We're going to run with it. Okay, let's see if we can get a game on this thing. And I have my trusty C64 USB drive right here. All right, I got it plugged in. So it's, it, it, is, it is just a little awkward. Okay, we'll open this back up. At F10, we are going to quit the emulator. Okay, when we're back here, we're gonna type MC for Midnight Commander, which is a great little Linux file manager. And the first thing I wanna do is on the left-hand side, I am going to find the USB drive that I just inserted. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna go back up here, we're gonna to go to media, and we're gonna to go to USB. That should pop it up, which it does. Let's hope that this game is gonna work. Let's do Operation Wolf right here. Press that, you can see actually what is inside that disk image, which is really cool that Midnight Commander can figure out what is inside that disk image. So let's go back. I'm gonna come over here by hitting Tab. I'm gonna to go to my right pane. And uh, we're gonna come down here to Combian. We're gonna go to the games. So I wanna move that virtual image from here by hitting tab over to games. So I should be able to just make sure that that's highlighted on the left. Hit F5 to copy and you'll see that it was going to copy Operation Wolf to Combian 64 games. Let's give that a try. And you see that over on the right hand side. Now we should be able to quit F10 get out of there. Let's exit out of our terminal. That'll take us back into our emulator. Let's go ahead and F10. Let's pull up a drive here. Let's attach to drive eight. And we know that is under Combian and under games right here. And you'll see Wolf 64. So we go ahead and attach that. Uh, we can go back now if we want. We can do load. And let's see if it's on there. And there it is. We're gonna go ahead and auto start an image this time. We also don't know if sound is working, we'll find out. All right, I'm not hearing any sound. Screen looks great though. Again, I'm really impressed with the screen. I'm more impressed with the screen than anything else. All right, so I'm gonna grab my handy dandy realistic speaker here with my adapter. And we'll just see if we're getting any sound whatsoever. Okay, we're getting sound out of the headphones. 
So I'm not sure if this even has speakers. Okay, let me check see if we see anything in here that looks like speakers. There aren't any onboard speakers on this thing. Well, that's disappointing because I don't want to carry this around with me everywhere I go. I just cannot believe that this does not have speakers. But there's no speakers. There's no batteries. There's no cable management. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just really confused who this is for. Well, let's play games. Maybe it's for me. All right, we'll do F3 now that we're back to this menu. Joystick and port two. Press fire. Looks like we need to go to this first one here. Good luck. And it's working. Oh, look at that. Let's see if we can get some more volume here. So the sound is at 100%, so that's the best I'm going to get out of this realistic speaker. If you had headphones, it would be much better. So the USB joystick from DC64 is just working perfectly here. What a nice little setup this is. Okay, so as we look at this after playing, Good news is the C64 joystick or probably any USB joystick is going to work. It's got a great screen. The sound is working through the earphone jack. So you'll need earphones or if you have a handy dandy realistic speaker like I have, uh, but the volume is very low. That was at maximum. So the audio is an issue. The cable management in the back is, is a disaster. I could probably work on that, but I just, I feel like out of the box that should have been better. Also, this is just bouncing around here like crazy still. I mean, it, it doesn't really affect you much when you're typing, but it shouldn't do that. I mean, we spent some money on a mold for a plastic case. Come on, let's get that right. I haven't tested this to know if it works. I'm sure it's going to. It's just that I, I haven't installed GEOS and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try and get the C64 OS on here. And when I do that, uh, I'm sure I'll get this working. Not concerned there. It's just a piece of plastic and it's got just a little tap ability there, so not great. Again, you close the screen. It doesn't do anything. You just close the screen. It's still on. You're going to have to manually do everything. Not that I would expect it would, but, you know, with a little engineering, you could put a switch in there that would activate the the sleep or the or the shutdown and reboot on the Pi 400. So I'm not sure why we couldn't spend a little time doing that, especially at 250 bucks. It is kind of cheesy looking. This is an even flush right here. It does require the 12 volt adapter to power the screen and the Pi 400, which makes it not portable because there's not even a battery in this thing. So to call this the Pi Dock 400, to call this a laptop no way. Now, if you want to call it the spiritual successor to the SX64, sure, you still have to plug it in. It's still pretty heavy. You have to lug it around. So would I recommend this? I don't know. I mean, what, I wish I hadn't spent 240 bucks on it. Uh, maybe a version 2 will come out and Vilros will make this a better product right now. It's just kind of a, feels like a toy that I've dropped this nice Pi 400 into. And it's hollow sounding. It just, uh don't know that I can recommend it. The things I can recommend are the screen. I do love that. I love the interaction with the screen and the Pi 400. I mean, this is great. This looks great. If it just had all the stuff in there, I mean, there's nothing in it. Nothing. There's nothing inside this thing. For my case, though, if I'm looking for a nice case and screen for my Combian Pi 400 that I don't mind plugging in and keeping it plugged in and plug a external uh, speaker and have no battery and have to uh, just all if, if I don't mind all that it's a purchase it's not two hundred and forty dollars worth I'll tell you what Bill Ross if you decide to come out with a version two send that my way and I will take a fair look at it right now I don't know that I can recommend this some of you may have some use case for this Hey, maybe some of you, we can talk and we can figure out how to shove a battery in here, but should we really need to do that? And I'm sure there's some folks out here and maybe even myself, I think we might be able to hack this and make this a little bit better somehow. But uh, for now, that's what it is. It's the Pi Dock 400, 240 bucks. Mm, that's a hard one, folks. Oh, but hey, you do get a case. So hopefully maybe this saves some time for you. How? Well, I don't want you to purchase it, get it in your house and then send it back because you didn't like it. So now you know all the limitations. Yeah, this is just a disaster. Well, they got my money on that one. Seriously, Bill Ross, if you do come out with a version two, contact me. Just, just contact me, period. Just, hey, even reply to the first one, say, hey, we just got your message and see that you have one and thanks for the review. 
Am I gonna send it back? I'm not, I'm gonna keep it. Uh, because again, I might hack on it a little bit more or I could see it being used possibly, potentially for something else, another project. So hopefully this was of value to you. If it was, please go down there below and you know, I could, I could use a couple of you to hit that thanks button to help reimburse me a little bit for this for bringing this and taking one for the team for you. Hit that little thanks button or better yet, become a member at buymeacoffee.com slash retrocombs and you can join at these fun Commodore inspired levels all the way from the pet all the way up to the Mega 65 and you get all kinds of cool stuff. So make sure you take a look at that. So that's it for this video. And hey, be sure to check out this video right here. This is kind of a cool hack I've put together. And if you want more about that Combian 64, here's that video. That's a fun video. You're gonna like that. And that's gonna talk about all this right here. All right, that's it for now. Retro Combs out. Thanks for watching. Thank you.